Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, I'm doing a French country planter. For my project today, I'm going to be using this wooden drawer that I had in my stash. Ultimately, my vision for this piece is inspired by the French country style urn planters. I'm going to begin by adding some curves on the outside. I'm using just some cheap clay that I had in my stash that I need to use up. And you can see I'm just molding it to the surface. I really want a nice curved edge. If you look up French country style urn planters, or just urn planters, you'll see a lot of them have beautiful curved sides. And obviously we're working with just a simple wooden drawer. So I need to add those curves in. So I'm adding some of my Sealy's quick set wood glue on the end. Cause that's the end of the drawer. There is a little bit of a difference in levels. So I've just added a little bit more clay there before I add the curved piece that I'm going to attach to the side. Once I'm happy with the level, I'm adding some more of my wood glue and then I'm attaching that curved piece. So I just did this by hand, so it's not going to be perfect at all, but it will definitely achieve the look that I'm going for. So I'm just molding it to the surface. I'm then gonna add a little bit more of my clay up the top to soften those edges. And whatever I do on the right-hand side there, I'm gonna to have to do on each of the corners of our planter box. Next, I'm going to add some more of my wood glue to the surface and I'm going to start layering some more clay down. I'm actually going to be covering the entire outside of the box with clay. Now, this is not great quality clay, unfortunately, so I'm definitely expecting a bunch of cracking, but I'm going to be layering more clay over the top that is definitely not going to crack. So as you can see, I've sped up the footage here. I'm adding those curved sides on each of the corners and then I'm starting to layer on some more of that clay. I wanted to create a raised detail on the front, so I'm just cutting a styrofoam egg that I had in my stash in half, and I'm going to be using this to create the raised element in the center. Because it's in the center, it would be more obvious if it wasn't a more perfect shape. So I'm going to add some of my wood glue to the back of that, put it in the center of my box. I'm then gonna add some glue over the top of that, and I'm going to start layering on some clay over the top of that. So I have rolled this out with a rolling pin and I'm just molding it to the surface. So it's a little bit repetitive, but I think you get the idea. Basically, I'm going to be adding all of the curved details to what is just a plain drawer, a plain box. This is definitely something that you can do. And I definitely recommend that you do find yourself some cheaper sort of clay because I did go through a lot of this. And so I wanna use my cheaper clay that I know is probably going to crack and separate a little bit on my base layer to build the form. And then I can layer my better quality clay over the top of it once this is dry. I only added that curve detail to the front center part. On the back, I'm just laying down a strip of clay. Here you can see I am rolling out some more clay, but this time I am using my Dust air dry clay. This is a much better quality clay. I don't find that I get any cracking with this. You can see the base layer, I have a lot of cracks. This is why I said this is the base layer. We're gonna go over the top of it. You won't even see those cracks. It's just created the base form that we needed. So I've laid down a generous amount of glue and now I'm going to start layering over the top of that with my dust air dry clay. I did then speed up the footage of me applying the dust air dry clay layers over the top because it was a little bit time consuming. Now obviously I've gone to a lot of effort to create curves here. If you wanted to keep it just a plain planter box shape that's fine. Next, I'm going to be using IOD's new veranda stamp. This is the smaller lattice stamp design from that pack. I'm pressing it into my still wet dust air dry clay because I want to create a lattice impression here. And as you can see, it creates a really beautiful effect. I have already done this on a pot in a previous video. So I'm just going to work my way around my 
planter box. Obviously my clay is still wet. This won't work if your clay is already set and hardened. So I'm just going to keep adding that lovely detail. Next, I'm going to be using Redesign's Salon Parisian Charm Mold. I just love this design. I haven't used it yet. I'm dusting it with cornstarch and then I'm going to be working my dust air dry clay into this beautiful design. You can see I'm just using my fingers to push that excess clay out. And once I'm happy with that, I'll flex the mold, flip it over and gravity helps me get my design out. Now, I don't mind that I have a couple of bits missing. We're going for a vintage look here. So this is just going to add to that charm. I'm going to add some of my Celia's Quick Set wood glue to the back of my casting. And this is going to go over the top of the raised detail that we added in the center. I did have a little bit of breakage on a couple of the smaller pieces. I'm not worried about that. I'm going to press down, just put those little pieces back into place. I'm then going to be using Redesign Salon de Glacis Mold and I'm just going to work the clay into one of the designs. This is a continuing design. You can see they all sort of link together, the top section there, but I'm just going to do a partial casting of the design that I want. And again, I'm flipping it over and this really is the easiest way to get your castings out. I'm going to add some glue to the back of the casting and then this is going to be positioned up the top of our ornate detail in the center. I'm then going to go back to the Salon Parisian Charm Mold by Redesign and I'm actually going to be just using the edge pieces. I've dusted both sides with cornstarch. I'm working my clay into that design and then again flipping it over to get it out. I'm going to add some glue to the back of this and then this is going to go in the bottom left hand corner. I loved the curves on this. I felt like it really accentuated the curves we created with the clay. I'm going to cast the opposite side and we're going to add some glue to the the back of that and then that's going to go on the right hand side. They're not exact mirror images but they're close enough. I'm then going to be using Redesign's Floral Chain Mold. I'm going to dust the design with cornstarch and I'm going to work my clay into that bottom design. I'm not going to be using the whole thing but I'm going to cast the entire design and then work out what I want to use. These are quite delicate and can be a little bit tricky so sometimes using a card or a palette knife along the back of the casting can help you get a clean edge. Once I have my casting out, I'm going to use a palette knife to cut off the excess designs that I don't want. And I'm going to add some glue to the back of them. And then this is actually going to drape on the left-hand side from the top design to the bottom left-hand design. I then decided to use part of the leftover pieces from the floral chain design mold. And then I did cast a couple of partial pieces of that same casting and glued that underneath to finish the design. So again, not perfect mirror images, but close enough. Back to the Salon de Glacis mold and I'm going to cast that same design that we put up the top in the center. And again, you can definitely just use part of your mold. You don't have to use them as is. And once I have pulled my casting out, I did then take a palette knife and I'm just going to be cutting off the floral design from that because it will not fit where I want it to go. I'm going to remove some of the excess clay there and then I'm going to be gluing that underneath our raised element from the center. I did end up gently lifting that center design so I could tuck my casting underneath and make it look a little bit tidier. I then took the floral chain mold by redesign again. I'm just going to do a partial casting there of the top design and I'm just going to be doing two of those and they're going to sit left and right up the top. Next, I'm going to do some more partial castings from the Salon de Glacis mold and I am going to be doing left and right castings of those again and I'm just working my clay into part of the design and then again once I'm happy with that I will flip it over. This particular part of the casting has some beautiful swells and scrolls and I thought it would be perfect sitting on the sides of our planter. 
as you can see, I'm positioning it up the top and sort of wrapping it around the side of the planter and then working it in so that it fits with the other castings that are already there. So I'm going to cast the opposite side of that design so it's like a mirror image and that will go on the top right hand side. On the sides of the planter, I cast the exact same molds for the corners. That is the Parisian charm design. And I also cast one of the Salon de Glacis molds as well to sit up the top. So this is just really complementing the front as well and tying them all together. So I did that on the other side. On the back, you can see that I am just working that veranda stamp into the still damp clay. I want it to match the front and I'm also adding some of the Parisian charm molds on the back as well but I still kept it pretty simple here. I then took IOD's trimmings one mold. I'm going to dust the top design with some cornstarch and I'm rolling my clay up and then really working it into the design. This isn't a very long design so I did have to repeat this a few times but it is very detailed and I think it ties in well with the redesign molds that we've been using. Before I added up the top the so I decided that I would add some glue and I would add a little bit more of my dust air dry clay just to build that up a little bit, help it tie in with the front and sides of the planter. And then once I'm happy with the levels of that, I will add some more glue and glue down the IOD trimmings mold. So I did have to cast quite a few of these but these are continuing patterns so they do tie together nicely and blend quite seamlessly together. To get a mitered corner on the corners of our planter box, I'm just laying one casting over the other, cutting it on an angle and then removing the excess. And I repeated the same process around the entire outside. Next, I wanna create some feet. So I have these little doorknobs in my stash. I'm going to add some of my Celia's Quickset wood glue around them. And then I'm going to be packing some clay into the divot, into that in interior curve so that we can fill it out a little bit. So I'm adding that clay around the edge, really trying to smooth it out and have it be a little bit more seamless. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm going to use some Gorilla Super Glue and also some hot glue. So the super glue will keep it permanently there. The hot glue is going to hold it there straight away. And I'm adding a little bit of pressure there. And then I did put something underneath it to sort of prop it up. I'm then going to take the Salon de Glacis mold again. And I did do a partial casting of the scroll designs. And I'm going to position that down the bottom. And so I've got some of it glued to the top part of the planter box there and also some that comes down and meets with the handle if that makes sense so sort of like wrapping around it. I did then use a palette knife to cut off the excess. I did then do a partial casting of part of that same mold so that I could have it sort of wrap around a little bit further. I did that on the left and right hand sides as well. It was a little bit tricky to film, but hopefully you get the idea. And of course I repeated this four times for each of the feet. I let my castings dry for 24 hours and the next day, this is how it's looking. I'm loving how this looks. It's a really great base. I'm gonna use Paint Couture's Peace Mineral Paint and I'm also using a size 16 eco brush and I'm going to be just really working that paint into all of those beautiful castings. I'm using a pointed or rather tapered tip brush and this paint is such a beautiful, almost French linen type color. And it just really goes perfectly, I think, with the look that we're trying to create. So I'm going to continue adding it to the entire planter box inside, outside, and on the bottom. And this has a built-in sealer, so I'm not going to have to add anything else over the top of this. And I did only do one coat because I didn't really think it mattered too much if I didn't get full coverage. We are going for an older, chippier look. If I inspire you to try any of these Paint Couture products or the Eco Brush, I would really appreciate it if you would use my affiliate link. I will put it in the description and on the screen. I just get a little thank you from Paint Couture in return.
I also added the Peace Mineral Paint to the inside of the planter box and for the inside section, I did do two coats. Once my paint was completely dry, I took out Paint Couture's Bronze Lux Metallic and I'm going to be applying it to the details that we added, the beautiful castings, and I'm just using an artist brush to dab and stipple that beautiful metallic on. I want this to be reminiscent of gilding. I'm not going for full coverage here because I do want it to look like it's worn away. And I'm also doing this before our next step because I know that when I come in and wipe back some of the next product that we're going to layer over the top of it, it will fade away even more and give it more of an authentically aged look. Now, obviously, if bronze isn't for you at this point, you could come in perhaps with Paint Couture's Antique Gold, maybe the Gold Mine, or maybe you want to come in with the Copper Lux Metallic. It will just be up to you and what your style is. Just a reminder too that these Lux Metallics are so highly pigmented, but obviously they become more vibrant as they dry. Once the bronze Lux Metallic was completely dry, I took out Paint Couture's Van Dyke Brown Glaze and I'm going to be really working that glaze into all of our castings and also the impressions that we made with the IOD Veranda Stamp. I'm really working it into those nooks and crannies, but I am going to be working in steps here. I don't want it to soak in too quick. So I'm going to use a wet wipe to pull some of it back. And you will see that I also do come in with a mister at times as well to sort of dilute the glaze. Now obviously the mineral paint does have a built-in sealer but I also just don't want to let it sit in one spot for too long. I don't want it to be too dark but I definitely want it to give us that aged appearance. And something that I really love to do is when I'm using a wet wipe I love to leave the little water droplets that you can sometimes achieve when you are wiping back the glaze with a wet wipe because often it can look like age spots perhaps. In this case, I felt like it really started to look a little bit like rust spots, which is perfect. That's exactly what I was thinking of, especially when you look up pictures of old cast iron planters. A lot of them do have that rustic age to them. So this glaze is definitely helping me to achieve that look. So I'm going to continue adding that beautiful glaze around the entire outside of our planter. Again, if this isn't for you, maybe it's too grungy. You could leave this step out. Or maybe you could come in with a white wash, paint wash perhaps, and, and really lighten it up. Just depends what look you're after. On the inside portion of the planter box, I ended up just using some of the wet wipes that I'd used to wipe away the excess glaze and that really gave me enough of an aged look on the inside. And here's a look at our French country planter. I love how this turned out. I really feel that the beautiful molds and stamps and the paint couture products work together perfectly to create this vintage inspired piece. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment and share it out. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.